Hey guys, this is Coop from Garage and Reviews, and today we're reviewing something that's pretty special. Rogue Fitness is the leader in strength and conditioning equipment. However, they have been passed in many ways by many different companies, in my opinion, in the area of weight benches. We're talking Rep Fitness with their AB series, the AB 5000, 5100, 5200. There's many companies in many different adjustable bench options where Rogue has kind of sat on their hands and just been like, ah, we've got something good enough until today when they brought out the Rogue Fitness Adjustable Bench 3.0. Let's review. So this is the Adjustable Bench 3.0. This is a long time in the making, as I've said. This is a bench that I think gets their best value option. This is the one that I think is designed for most of you. This is the Adjustable Bench 3.0 using a ladder style system. Listen to this. Oh, that's satisfying. And then back down and ready to go. And the bench that I think this most is similar to is one that is really our top pick up until this point. Maybe we'll do a video in the future if you'd like to see that on the best benches. Make sure you subscribe and you can follow. However, this one is most similar to the Rep AB5200. One of our top picks and one of my personal favorite benches. So when I saw this came out, I saw the upgrades, the updates, I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to get it in. Now we're gonna do the coop score just like we've done in previous videos. However, we're gonna do this simultaneously. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the thing that happens for everybody is the unboxing process. So this one came in three separate boxes. They are using some better packaging than most companies in that they're spraying the liner so the cardboard doesn't break. They're adding different rubber pieces to protect the different parts of the bench. And the shipping wasn't too expensive. It did take a while, so I'm leaving some points off for that. However, overall, it was a you know, decent shipping experience. The only thing I didn't like is it comes very unassembled. A lot of this you have to assemble, which means it's in three different boxes. It's not quite as bad as like an IKEA product, but for being made in the USA, it would have been nice if it was more assembled. However, I get it in that they're trying to save shipping. So overall, I'd give like the assembly delivery setup part an eight and a half out of 10. Now to the construction of the bench. This bench is almost all made in the USA. Something that Rogue's very proud of, and I think many people are, that make things in the USA. And this is just like pretty much every other Rogue product. It's built stout, it's using thick 11 gauge steel, except here on this panel here, which this one is in stainless, which personally I prefer because it's a stainless rod on a stainless ladder, which means you're not gonna have like corrosion over time, and it just looks good contrasting against the black but the construction on this is heavy duty. So these parts here appear to be seven gauge or maybe even thicker. Same thing with this ladder system. Most of the bench is using like 11 gauge box tubes. So it's like really stout, really thick tubing. It's basically made to last and you know, not be so over the top heavy that it's difficult to move. This is 125 pounds, which as I alluded to previously, is the exact same weight as the AB5200. It's kind of like a good mixture of like heavy duty, stability, long lasting, while also being somewhat portable. So the construction on this is overall really good. I give it a nine and a half out of 10. Rogue's foam and covering is oftentimes some of the best. So the foam they're using is a single layer of foam. However, it's firm has nice edge control and is more firm than what I find with most other benches. I think it's like a higher density foam, which I prefer. It's not gonna like over time have these wear marks. It's like if you leave something on it, it's not gonna take a long time to come back. It's soft enough that when you're on it and you're doing like a heavy bench, you can kind of sink into it a little bit so it's comfortable, but it's not so soft that you like sink in and you feel instable. I really like it. It's got a thick plywood backing and then the vinyl cover is like, you know, a nicer vinyl. It's not the cheap stuff you see on like Amazon. It's something that's a little bit thicker, a little bit more grippy. It's not quite as grippy as the Thompson Fat Pad, which I would love if they offered that vinyl on every bench they made. And it's also not quite as grippy as what's reps doing on the AB5200 and most of their benches. However, I actually prefer this vinyl against that one because I've noticed that that wears more than this does. This will last a little bit longer. So overall, the foam and covering, I give it an eight and a half. 
So an important feature with any bench, especially adjustable benches, because you're like higher up center of gravity is the stability of the bench. And most of the stability comes through the back leg. The back leg on this has a 24.75 inch width, which there's like positive and negatives. It's positive in that it's gonna be more stable than a thinner back foot, but it's more negative because it's gonna take up more space. Personally, I would rather have something that's a little bit wider because if I'm doing something really heavy, I wanna make sure like I'm not gonna fall. And I also use my bench in like unique ways. So sometimes I use it for sex, just kidding. Sometimes I use it for bent over rows like this and you know you're on there it's just like you're not just using the bench for bench people often use it for step ups or box jumps things like that so having some extra stability is nice and most of that stability comes from the back foot because oftentimes this front foot like you see here it's just a simple like single leg and the reason that's nice so you can tuck your legs but if that back leg isn't wide enough and this is very small like this, it can lead to like rocking issues. The 125 pound weight is going to, you know, lead to some stability too. A heavier bench would be even more stable, but I think it's like a good mix so that it's still portable. So for the stability, nine out of 10. So one of the big benefits to a ladder style system is that you don't have to use two hands. It's super simple. Coming down you do, but going up, you simply just pull the bench. However, these often have fewer adjustment options than what you'd find on like a pop pin. So a pop pin, most of the time, you can just put holes in the little arc and you can just have a ton of different options. Like I've seen some with like 20 different adjustment options, which can kind of be annoying because it's like, how do you choose which one? How do you find the one that you want? This is a good medium. So this has 10 different adjustment options along with the laser cut numbers. I would prefer if they put laser cut numbers on every single one. However, going in between will save them money, save you money, and also gives you enough of an option like you know where you're at. On the front, they have three different adjustment options for the front seat. So the back has 10, front has three, the back goes all the way from zero to 85, which is what most people want. 90 is typically too far forward. I've noticed pretty much every modern bench that's coming out that's adjustable is only using 85 degree which I like. So the adjustment options are a lot. Obviously there could be more, so I'm not gonna give them perfect score because you could do more. However, for a ladder style system, this is about as much as you can really add without going absolutely overboard or making it a little bit less safe. So I give it a nine out of 10. For a ladder style bench, the pad gap on this is one of the thinnest that's available. It's not the thinnest of any adjustable bench. The AB5000 Zero Gap has the thinnest that's available because it has that adjustable mount. However, that adjustable mount isn't like the nicest training experience. It requires extra like turning, dialing in, that sort of thing. For just a bench that's able to adjust without any extra movement, beautiful. It's so close together. So when you're laying down on it, like just flat, it's not a big enough gap that you really feel it. You know it's there, but it's not too much. But when you start going to other adjustment angles, like here, there's hardly anything. And then when you adjust the seat pad, it's like, it just removes itself. And especially when you're at 30 degrees on the seat pad, it's non-existent and you can go all the way up to 85. Obviously they start, the foam starts compressing, but I think that's fine because you're not really gonna hurt the foam. It's just gonna compress and then come back because it's a really high density foam. So I love the lack of distance between the pad, the back pad and also the seat pad. I give it a nine out of 10. So I've been able to use the adjustable bench for bench, obviously adjustable bench. So like incline press with dumbbells, with barbells, also dumbbell poles, like incline poles laying down and also just like random step up stuff, just so I can get like an idea of how it feels compared to other benches. The training experience is great. If the componentry is great, typically the training experience is nice. What can come into play are some of the additional options that are on here, like these handles that can kind of just make it a little bit different depending on the type that's being used or the stability during the bench, how it feels. However, overall, it's been very nice. So I give it a nine out of 10. Now, one unique part of this bench that is kind of taken from the AB5200, other benches have done it. It's the ability to stand the bench up. Honestly, every adjustable bench that will come out from now on that's for a home gym will likely have this ability. The reason is because it's just so nice to store it, get it out of the way and not have to deal with it. This one is really nicely done, partly because it's got the wide base and also because it's got UHMW plastic on the actual stand, so it's somewhat safe. 
And because the casters are so freaking smooth and nice, it makes it easy to move back and forth. It's just like, this is the premium model. They have the cheaper model that's not that much cheaper, but the one with the stainless has the upgraded casters. Ordinarily, I'd just be like, ah, they're casters. They're not that much better. Don't spend more for them. But these are that much better. The casters on the other ones are the same one they use on the Monster Bench, which I do not like. They make a lot of noise. They just have an axle. They're not using bearings. These ones are extremely smooth. They have this nice branding on the rubber. They also have this cool like red color. It's just like, ah, it's just premium. And I think that in addition to the stainless steel is worth spending the extra money for if you're gonna buy a bench of this level anyways. So the stowability on this is just, it's premium. So overall, I give it an eight and a half out of 10. It's not absolutely perfect. There are ways that you can make it smaller, make it a little bit more safe. However, eight and a half out of 10 is pretty good. All right, so as you'd imagine, this isn't the cheapest bench. This is a Rogue bench. That's not to say Rogue's overpriced. Honestly, for mainly USA equipment, like pretty comparable to a lot of other companies that are out there. They're cheaper than most other like shops of their nature. Like if you compare this to like a Sornex bench, this blows them out of the water as far as price and shipping. Same with Prime Fitness or some of those others. So that being said, most people are comparing this to other options like what's coming from Rep Fitness or Fringe Sport or Titan Fitness or some of these other companies. So the value, it's premium, but it's not overpriced. So this model right here is the upgraded model, but most of you will probably look at the cheaper model, which is 585. Plus to me at least, it was 45 bucks shipping, which makes it 630 bucks total, which like when you compare it to what we used to be able to have, that's a damn good deal. However, today we have many more options. So when you compare it to what I think is the most comparable bench, which we're gonna do a comparison on in the future, the AB5200 at 500 bucks, it, uh, it becomes a little bit less value. This overall is a better quality bench. This has better componentry. It's more stable. It has better foam. It's just like, it just feels better. Everything about it is like, it's very nice. It also costs more. So therefore it should feel better. So is it better value? Ah, it's sometimes a toss up. I'll talk about more of it in a future video, a comparison between this one and the AB5200 because I think they're that good to compare. However, the value on this, especially when you start adding in the upgraded options, even though I like them and I think they're worth it, it just starts getting a lot more expensive. So the upgrade ends up being about 735 bucks when you include shipping. So in my opinion, it's about an eight out of 10 on the value scale. I think it's a good value, I do but I don't know if it's as good of a value of some of the other options out there for most people that are really looking for function for the best price. So culminating the final coop score and the overall basically average for the video, I got some other like basically scores in there that we put on the site, things like aesthetics and things like that that I think are just a little bit extra for this video. Overall, I give this bench an 8.58 out of 10, which is damn good. You can tell the stuff that I really like because it's stuff that I end up putting in my garage and using a lot. This one will go in my garage. This bench is premium. Do I think it's the best for most people? Eh, we'll talk about that in the future because there are so many freaking options. However, I will give this the coop stamp of love. Yeah. It's a good bench, that is weird, wow. All right, however, if you'd like to get this bench, I'll put a card in the top right that you can check out, click on it, take you over to Rogue so you can purchase the product or you can see it in the link in the bio that obviously supports us. So thank you guys for doing that. This is Coop from Garage and Reviews. We will see you next time. Peace.